Hundreds of local businesses in San Diego County could be just days away from having to dial back their reopenings. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Today, Governor Gavin Newsom imposed new restrictions impacting 70% of the state's population in the face of increasing numbers of COVID-19 cases. News 8's Richard Allen has more on what it will take to fall on the state's watch list, as well as the governor's plan to step up enforcement statewide. Well, that's right. As the number of COVID cases locally continues to climb, the state is taking notice and could soon take action, making preventive measures like wearing facial coverings all the more crucial. Bottom line is the spread of this virus continues uh, at a rate that is particularly concerning. So concerning that Wednesday, Governor Gavin Newsom placed renewed restrictions on 19 counties that have fallen on the state's watch list, including all Southern California counties except for the time being San Diego. They will now be required to curtail all indoor activities at a number of venues, including restaurants, movie theaters, zoos, museums, wineries, and tasting rooms. We have specifically targeted our efforts to close indoor operations. The governor also announced the formation of so-called strike teams, bringing together agencies like Cal OSHA, the BBB, ABC, and the CHP to step up enforcement of the health orders statewide. It's more education. I'm not coming out with a fist. We want to come out uh, with an open heart. These restrictions in other counties come as San Diego just imposed its own. Beginning tonight, restaurants must obey a 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew. Bars that don't offer food service have been closed, while wineries can continue to serve wine in outdoor tasting areas without having to meet the food requirement. We simply cannot continue with these growing trends, and we had to take action. And even more restrictive action may soon be taken. That's because for the past two days now, San Diego County has been flagged by the state for having, on a 14-day average, more than 100 cases of coronavirus per 100,000 residents. If that remains the case tomorrow as well, we then fall on to the state's watch list. We anticipate by the weekend that we will be on that list as well. If we remain on the watch list for three consecutive days, July 3rd, 4th, and 5th, uh, then on July 6th, we would be forced to take the enforcement action. And that action would be the same restrictions our neighboring counties are now facing, a pause on indoor activities at restaurants and other businesses that would last a minimum of three weeks. Back to you. Thank you, Richard. Let's take a closer look at the numbers. Today, the county reported 474 new cases of COVID-19 and seven deaths, bringing the death toll to 372. Those who died range in age from 57 to 89. Of the more than 7,800 tests reported, 6% came back positive. That raises the county's 14-day rolling average to 4.5%. There are now a total of 14,623 confirmed cases in San Diego. Beaches in San Diego County remain open, but one coastal town is taking an extra measure to keep crowds down. Tonight, Oceanside announced it will close its beach parking lots from Friday to Monday morning. News 8's Abby Alford shares how lifeguards and police are enforcing the health restrictions on top of 4th of July safety. San Diego County Sheriff's Department says it will continue with education and voluntary compliance, but anyone who's in violation, that'll be sent to the county health officer for further review. Cities across the county echo the same type of enforcement. The beaches are filling up and it's not even the 4th of July. San Diego is exempt from the governor's restrictions and coastal cities remain to keep their beaches open. It's going to be crazy time. Especially with Orange County and L.A. County closing their beaches, everyone's going to come over here. The crowds could be huge, especially with Ventura and Los Angeles County beaches closed, along with many in Orange County. They're expected to head south and Oceanside would be the first stop. Lifeguards there say that they're leaving enforcement up to police. We normally have extra uh, staffing just due to the crowds you know, around the beach area, and we'll be doing the same again this year. Tuesday night, the Oceanside City Council voted to close beach parking lots to minimize those crowds. Now, you do have to park there. And Sanitas lifeguards believe with those lots closed and state beaches closing its lots too, the crowds will keep moving south. Because of COVID-19 restrictions and the fourth, Encinitas is staffing two lifeguards at each tower, and the state gave them 10,000 masks to hand out. In San Diego, lifeguards say that high surf and rip currents are going to keep them busy so they won't be focused on enforcement. We're going to be up to our eyeballs with keeping people from drowning on 4th of July 
Social distancing is going to be the responsibility of every person on the beach. While police are left to enforce, they say they won't be checking IDs to make sure you're hanging out with the people in your own household like the health orders recommend you do. That would be very difficult to do. I mean, it's, it's just a reminder. And of course, we would tell them just basically the same thing. And then it's up to them whether they're their family members or not. I mean, that's going to be a little hard for us to, to control. The San Diego Police Department says it will continue with education and it's also staffed the vice unit for its 4th of July weekend. In Kearney Mesa, I'm Abby Alford for News 8. Thanks, Abby. As COVID cases continue to rise here in San Diego, hospitalizations are up as well. And healthcare professionals from the region's hospitals say they are getting worried. News 8's Lamore Abrams has more on their growing concerns. Look no further than emergency rooms swamped with new patients. We spoke to an ER nurse here at UCSD seeing the surge firsthand. We're going as fast as we can. The numbers swelling by the day. People are waiting in the ER to just try to find a bed upstairs. Uh, they've been there for at least a couple of days. That's how packed we are. UCSD ER nurse Anna Wilkinson pulling herself away from patients to deliver the message. You know, we're very much trying to tell the public to just wear a mask um, and we're drawing, we're doing our best to wear our PPE. Nothing could have prepared her more than the epicenter of the pandemic in April. Wilkinson flew across the country to volunteer at a hospital in New York City. Have I seen that here yet? Not yet. But is it possible? Yes. Here's part of the dilemma. Doctors say the patients coming in have pre-existing conditions. The rest are still transmitting. So the other 70 something are out in the public, right? And, and maybe are not aware that they are infected. As of Wednesday, the county reported about 1,800 COVID hospitalizations. We're very, very concerned about the trajectory of this pandemic. The CEO of UC uh, San Diego Health System representing uh, all hospitals in the region healthcare. and saying this. The most important thing you can do to respect us as healthcare workers and healthcare leaders is to mask to socially distant, to follow the policies. Many following the rules are also refocusing on the front lines. During the quarantine, we would go into our balcony and we had our pots and pans. Courtney Rangel coordinated the nightly show of gratitude for healthcare workers in Little Italy. She says attitudes shifted when cities began reopening, but she plans to get loud again. Really focus on the things that are important and um, Appreciating the healthcare professionals is one of those things. And she'd like to spread the love again. Eight o'clock every night, she says, go outside, get loud, and show your gratitude for those still at it. Thanks, Lamore. San Diego International Airport says it's still making changes to try and keep travelers safe. Plexiglass guards have been installed in public spaces. You'll also notice floor decals and signs asking people to stay six feet apart and not sit close together. All airport employees are required to self-monitor and cannot come to work if they have any symptoms. More than 52,000 new cases of COVID-19 were reported across the U.S. today. That is a new one-day record. The virus has killed more than 128,000 people nationwide. And confirmed cases in the U.S. are nearing 2.7 million. But there is potentially good news on the vaccine front. Two companies... Pfizer and BioNTech say clinical trials are showing positive results, but gave no timeline on how soon a vaccine could be ready. COVID-19 isn't the only virus that researchers are worried about right now. According to the Union Tribune, UC San Diego researcher Pascal Ganu uh, expressed concern today about a new swine flu virus that jumped from pigs to humans in China. Ganu said it's spreading quickly and might have the potential to produce a pandemic. The new virus is a strain of the H1N1 swine flu that erupted in 2009 and killed 285,000 people worldwide. Because of COVID-19, wildfire evacuations could look a little different this year. Today, county leaders were joined by CAL FIRE and members of San Diego's Red Cross to announce a new disaster plan. They say if you have to evacuate, you could be sheltered in a hotel and receive prepackaged food. San Diegans are asked to have an evacuation plan in place and make sure to include face masks and hand sanitizer in your emergency kits. Progress for short-term rentals in the city of San Diego tonight. For the first time, SDR platforms, labor, and a municipality, our city, 
are working together to find common ground. Unite Here, the San Diego County Hotel and Food Service Workers Union, and Expedia Group, the parent company for short-term rental brands VRBO and HomeAway, came to a compromise. The two sides agreed to a new set of rules they say will preserve neighborhood quality of life while protecting private property rights. The proposal will be discussed at a future San Diego City Council meeting. The hope is to have the rules in place by 2021.